Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. A couple of weeks ago I had my birthday. <clears throat> I got some cool stuff for my birthday as well, whether it be some horror stuff for movies, whether it be some horror games that I picked up uh, based on money people gave me, my weekly pickups type of thing, or just uh, stuff people gave me directly. I only have about three horror films, so I thought I would also include the horror games that I picked up recently. I do want to make this clear. I've been kind of thinking about this as well. I've been playing a lot of video games lately, but nothing uh, really horror-focused. I played some Silent Hill 2, some Resident Evil 4. <clears throat> I'm a big, like, I'm a big horror guy, as you guys know. But, like, I haven't played games in a long time. I've only recently, in like the last six months, really gotten back into gaming. And I'm catching up on a lot of stuff. I got a lot of newer stuff that I have never had, that I didn't know existed with some of these cases, but we'll talk about that in a moment. But, uh... There's a lot of really cool presents for like my wife or my uh, my mom and my grandfather that I was really excited to show you guys. So if you want reviews for some horror games in the future, let me know down in the comment section. I'd love to do that. I would be fine with that. But uh, not really anything like Call of Duty or anything like that, but like the kind of stuff that I picked up or the stuff coming out soon. I was surprised looking online. <clears throat> I've been kind of debating on getting a you know, a new Xbox or a new PS5 or whatever, if I can find them. They're really hard to come by right now, but if I happen to find one in the future, I would like to pick them up at some point. I've been kind of glancing around at the prices, but I've also been getting recommendations now on Amazon based on those searches for things that are survival horror games coming out and stuff that is out right now that I haven't heard of yet. I think there's one called, like, Ikea for PS5 or something. It looks cool. I really want that. I want to get back into... Uh, gaming more so when I have the time, but I have a lot of things I want to do like balance out my Goosebumps channel It's Christmas time right now. I'm watching Christmas movies <clears throat> But anyway, I wanted to get into doing some uh, Some video game reviews if you guys want me to if you don't that's fine Let me know that down in the comment section down below too. It won't be a super constant thing just because I don't have As much time as a video game takes to be able to do that but if I'm doing that, then why not review horror books on this channel, too? I don't know. I, I've kind of debated that. I've batted it around. Uh, this could just be a horror channel, per se, but I don't know. Uh, really, the only horror authors who attract attention are Stephen King. That's about it. <laughs> Nobody knows Jonathan Mayberry or uh, Brian Keene, except for the hardcore fans. Anyway, so we'll figure that out later on down the road. Let me know down in the comments section what you guys would recommend to me about that. Anyway, starting off with the movies that I got as a pickup for my birthday, I want to talk about... Uh, the few pickups my wife gave me, aside from a couple of games she got me. Now, I'm a big VHS fan, as you guys know. I've never owned a copy of this particular movie, but I'm really glad that I do now. <clears throat> Mainly because this one is an unrated theatrical cut and a rated version, which kind of surprises me. I didn't know that existed. A VHS 2. VHS 2 is very good. If you haven't seen it, you're missing out. Big fan of the series. VHS 2 is a really solid entry. Not my favorite, like a lot of people's. But it's good. Really love it. Anthology film. Really creepy stuff. The wraparound in here is so good. The next one here. I owned this back when it came out. I remember it went straight to video. And I picked it up. And it was awful. <laughs> and I hated it deeply. Easily the worst of the VHS series. Especially after four other great movies with 1, 2, 94, 99. We have VHS Viral. I told my wife ahead of time, like, hey, I want this because I'm a completionist. Which she knows that. Honey, if you're watching this, I love you deeply. Thank you so much for taking out the money and the time to buy this when you know I hate it. <laughs> I wanted it. I wanted it genuinely for my collection again. Uh, I had sold my old copy back in the day. But uh, I hate VHS Viral. I do not watch this very often. But VHS has come back so great now with 99 to 94 and Shudder in general being involved with that that I hope that I can keep collecting these over time. I would love to have a full set of all of them. And now I do right now, because I've owned VHS 1 and 94 since the 94 got a VHS, or a DVD release. So, VHS Viral, awful movie, do not recommend it, worst of the franchise, but with that being said, I'm glad I own it. So, there we go. <clears throat> and right here might be my favorite thing she picked up for me. I'm so excited about this. I've watched this like 5,000 times. I love this documentary so much. Never Sleep Again, the, ne or the Elm Street Legacy. This is the documentary on the Fright... I can't talk. The Freddy Krueger Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I think it covers everything up to the remake. I don't think it went past the remake at all. I don't think it... Well, there's nothing really after that, but you know what I mean. Like, I don't think they covered the actual remake. I think it's everything into Freddy vs. Jason, which is fine with me. This is such a great documentary. If you guys have not seen this and you're as big of a Nightmare on Elm Street fan as I am, you've missed out. This is so good. 
When I say that I've watched this like five or six times, all four or five hours of it, I mean that. I think it's better than the Crystal Lake Memories documentary. I think it is so freaking good. I love how when we go from one movie to the next, we have like the little uh, kind of sets that we have. It's like a stop motion effect thing that we did. It's so good. It's really great. I love it a lot. Uh, such a good movie. So great. The stories on the behind the scenes stuff is, is just amazingly, shockingly great. <clears throat> One of my favorite purchases of all time. I've been meaning to pick up a copy of that for years now. When it first came out to DVD, it was like 50 bucks. And it seems like it's dropped to like 10 now. So pick it up now on like Amazon. Now we have some of the pickups from my mom, my grandfather. Uh, I think my grandfather is the one who got this for me. I could be wrong. Uh, Jack, if you're watching this, I love you, man. Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. I've not seen part two yet, but I watched this for the first time either last year or the year before. And I loved it. I thought this was so good for a TV movie from like the 80s. This is a fantastic slasher film. From what I remember, it wasn't even gory. It just had a lot of heart to it. It was well made. It was fun. The music was good. I just remember really loving this when I saw it. And I've wanted to own it forever. Um, I like the whole sackhead killer, kind of a throwback to Friday the 13th Part 2. I love it. I think it's got so many great things about it. I think if you have not seen Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, you've missed out. Yes, it's a goofy title, but it's also a goofy movie that really knows what it is. And as a TV movie, it's one of the few TV movies I've really liked in my life that's a non-Stephen King TV movie. This is really good, and I really recommend it if you haven't seen it. Thank you, Jack. <clears throat> now, this one right here my mom got for me. Uh, I was not super excited to see this. With the things I've heard... And the reaction to Venom with Tom Hardy, even though Venom 2 was awful. <laughs> it's an awful movie. But I like the first Venom quite a bit. Uh, I'm hoping that Morbius is good. I don't like Jared Leto either. I think he's a talented actor when he's in the right thing, like Oscar bait type stuff. But him as Morbius, as Michael Morbius, I don't know how I feel about that. I have not seen the movie yet. I know it's a meme and everything, but I've wanted to see this when the trailer released. Yeah, it looked generic. Yeah, it looked bland. But I still wanted to see it. Now I have the chance to. So I'm going to watch it sometime soon. I'm going to try to get out a review for it when I do see it. But uh, I hope it's good. I know it's got a lot of CGI. It's technically an anti-hero movie. I love Morbius in the old 1990s Spider-Man cartoon. I love him in the comics. I'm just a Michael Morbius fan in general. I like the whole vampire in the MCU. Not even the MCU, but just the Marvel Comics world. I really hope this is fun. Uh, it might not be. I don't know. But I hope it is. So, there you go. I'm going to take a taste of my drink real quick. <clears throat> I've done so much recording today, my voice is kind of sore right now. It's going to be hard to go to work today. I have to yell at people. <clears throat> Alright, let's move into the video games now. By the way, thank you, Mom, for Morbius. Uh, I never thought I would say that. Anyway. So I have some things I picked up kind of back-to-back. -back. <clears throat> this game here is part of a major movie franchise. Or a trilogy. It's kind of not really a major one anymore. Uh, I know there were some games in the past. I never played them, but I've seen like Sinister Cinema Reviews, Jason, here on YouTube talk about this. Not this game, but he's the one that brought this to my attention that this existed. I'm a fan of found footage. As a subgenre of horror. I love it quite a bit, as many of you know. And I will tell you right now, this game here sounded like it would be up my alley. And I wanted to buy it immediately. I hadn't had my PlayStation 4 here at my house yet. I had it at my grandfather's house where I used to live a couple of years back before I got married. And I kept waiting and waiting. I just never picked it up, never had the time to. Eventually I found the, the controller plug-in for my uh, controller to charge it for the PS4. So now I have everything. I went ahead and bought this because it was on sale for like 20 bucks. From what I can tell, this was not well received at all. But for me, it looks great. I think the visuals, the graphics look incredible for this game. From the couple of clips I saw online, I think it's cool that your companion is a dog. That probably gave away what I'm talking about right now. This is made by Bloober, who is going to make the Silent Hill 2 remake, which I'm not excited about, but I love Silent Hill, so who cares? Uh, Blair Witch. Yeah, Blair Witch has a PlayStation 4 game which kind of surprised me a little bit. I'm hoping this is going to be good. It's just you and your dog and your video camera in the woods. The reason I love found footage, especially when it takes place in the woods, because the woods scare me. Uh, I have a fear of that. I have a fear of the dark out in the woods. When you're in the woods, if you've never experienced this, if you're in the woods, you can't see shit at nighttime. 
And I don't think a lot of people really realize that and respect that. A lot of people think it's like a gimmick in movies. No, you genuinely can't see anything. Uh, the moonlight only does so much. If it's a cloudy night, well, you ain't seeing shit. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping this game, from what I've seen so far, it seems to take advantage of that. That's a good thing. The reason found footage scares me when it takes place in the woods is because you're taking a camera, walking around the woods, you can only see what that camera can see. And that's scary, in my opinion. This game, making that an actual game as a concept, sounds great. I don't know whether Bluebird's a good company or not, I don't know. But I'm really excited to play this and talk about it. Uh, it seems like it's kind of tied with the cover here to that third movie that came out. I think there's a plane flying over my head, you guys might be able to hear that, I'm sorry. It's kind of interfering. Um, I'm gonna have to fight those guys. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it looks like it's tied to that newer movie from Adam Wingard. I don't think it is, but it looks like it. With that being said, though, I'm excited about this game. I hope it's good. I hope it's good. It says that it includes the Good Boy Pack and Halloween Skin. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Anyway, moving along. This one right here, you guys know I'm a massive Goosebumps fan. I reviewed this game on that channel, but I didn't play the game. I actually just watched a walkthrough because the game was released kind of during COVID, from what I remember. And therefore, it was hard to get your hands on a copy, just like it is when the books come out now. Ever since the new Goosebumps books have been coming out, you literally can walk into a fucking Barnes & Noble and not get your hands on one. Uh, the brand new first day release, you just, you can't. They just don't put it out. I don't know what's up with that. But if I don't order something like this off Amazon, I usually can't get it. I found this in the Walmart section I like to call, We Don't Give a Shit If You Steal This. <laughs> because they're not in like a plastic case, they're not uh, in, a, in a way that you couldn't just cut the case open and steal it. This is, uh, I bought it for 20 bucks, by the way. PlayStation 4, Goosebumps Dead of Night. I love Goosebumps. I really enjoyed the first person aspect to this game that was kind of nice as an FPS sort of kind of. It's kind of an expansion of the previous Goosebumps game that came out. I cannot remember what that one was called. It's kind of a similar title, but it's something different. This one focuses a lot more on, ha on Haunted Halloween, the second Goosebumps movie, because of the gummy bear here, because of that witch up here from Haunted Halloween, the movie Slappy, obviously. It's kind of a kid's game, but if this had come out when I was a kid, I would have loved it. And I like it for what it is, what I remember seeing of it years ago. I'm excited to play this. I just want to enjoy it. Uh, I'll probably, when I review this, I'll probably review it on the Goosebumps channel and not here, even though I've technically actually reviewed it already there. Uh, First-hand experience and actually seeing a walkthrough are a little bit different. I might do a re-review there, I don't really know. I might just do a review here, I don't know. We'll figure it out later on when I get around to this, but I have a lot of other stuff in plan right now, like True Crime, Streets of L.A., and uh, Silent Hill 2, Resident Evil 4, but eventually I'll work my way to this. I'm also playing the new Saints Row remake. Whew, <laughs> good lord. Moving along, I bought this on eBay <clears throat> recently because I've never played this game. I tried to watch a walkthrough years ago. I'm not a fan of this franchise very much. Uh, I like certain games, mainly the original game, and that would be Resident Evil Code Veronica. Now, there's an X back here, so I thought the original title was going to be Code Veronica X. Apparently, it's not. Well, I could have sworn. This is like a weird Mandela effect. The cover on the spine actually says Veronica X. I could have sworn there was no X there. Anyway, I've never played this game. It's PlayStation 2. I love my PlayStation 2. I've been playing a lot of that here recently, like I said. But when I watched a walkthrough of this back in the day, it felt like a knockoff of 2 and 3. And mind you, I've never played 2 and 3. I've just watched Agent JR's reviews and playthroughs over and over again over the years, since I was in, like, middle school. And Code Veronica seems really cool. I don't know if this is a different game. Or if it is just Code Veronica X. Maybe there's two different games. I don't know. Let me know down in the comment section down below. I'll try to do a little research. But it sticks with the tank controls. It has you... I think this is a prequel. I could be wrong to the original game, I think. But I could be wrong. I don't know anything about this. I don't know if it's any good. I've heard good things about Code Veronica. Uh, I hope it's good. I want to check it out. I, I really want to start picking up these old Resident Evils. They're having the same issue that Silent Hill has. Silent Hill games right now... Are ridiculous on price. I mean, you might be paying $100 for the worst one in the franchise, like Downpour, that came out like not even 10 years ago, you know? Resident Evil's having the same problem right now with the classic games. I recently bought the director's cut of the game for like 20 bucks because somebody listed it and didn't realize how much it was worth uh, for the director's cut on PS1. <clears throat> I need to buy 2 and 3. I need to buy, uh, well, whatever ones are missing. I don't have 5. I don't have 6. I've never played 6. 5 I sucked at. 
Uh, I'm still terrible at four. I'm trying my best to work my way and beat that game for the first time ever. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> But there's a lot of these I've never played. I haven't played Village. I haven't played Seven, even though I love both of those and the playthroughs I've seen over and over again for them. Uh, I really want to get into all of this stuff and play Resident Evil and really respect what the games are. But there's a lot going on. So that is what it is. But I'm glad I own this. Let me know down in the comment section down below, though, like I said, if Code Veronica and Code Veronica X are possibly different things. I don't know. It would take a quick Google search, but let me know. I might take a look if I remember. Moving along, though, uh, I got another PS4 game here. I actually bought this with birthday money. The other three I bought over the course of like two or three weeks with my own money. Uh, before my birthday, as a matter of fact. This one here I bought with some birthday money for my dad. Thank you, dad. Uh, this is PlayStation 4 Resident Evil Origins Collection. Now, by the way, back in the day, this includes two games. Back in the day, we had the GameCube remake of Resident Evil 1, the original game. And when I found out about this, back when I started watching Agent JR's playthroughs, like I talked about, he didn't play that game, the remake, but watching how beautiful the GameCube recreated that original game, it was shocking. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> couldn't believe how great it was. Uh, it looked amazing. I never played it myself, but watching the videos of it was shocking to me. It was so good. And I've always wanted to play that, and I might still buy a copy for GameCube if I could find one. But then I found out they re-released it before 2 and 3's remake as this. They put it out as a, as a digital download at first, then they released this uh, two-pack thing here. And I can't wait to play this. Apparently they kept like the fixed camera angles that 2 and 3 ditched out on, which it seems like 2 and 3 got more praise for ditching out on that. I don't really know how I feel about that right now. Um, not that I'm a massive fan of 2 and 3's original games for PS1, but still. Uh, I do love the original Resident Evil, so I'm hoping that this original remake will be really good for PS4. We'll see. But there's another game in here called Resident Evil Zero that I have never heard of. I don't know what that is. I've heard online briefly on some of the Reddit posts I heard about this collection here. I've heard that Resident Evil, si Resident Evil Zero is difficult. I don't know anything about it. I don't know what it could be like. I don't know why it would be so difficult. What, what would change about this? Is it uh, even more limited? ink ribbons or something. I don't know. I would love to find out, though. I can't wait to get around to it and try it out. But for right now, Resident Evil Zero and the original remake, I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to play this. Um, I'm kind of waiting off. I've started too many games recently, so I'm trying to catch up, finish things first. But uh, that looks really, really good, and I am super stoked to play that. About, uh, I want to say... Not last weekend, but the weekend before. My wife and I went over to see her dad about an hour away from here. <clears throat> and when we were hanging out, we decided to stop into a couple of stores. She wanted to go to a Hobby Lobby. I wanted to, a, to go to a GameStop. I drove a little bit down the street to go to a GameStop. And uh, I picked up some things. I picked up a lot of the Call of Duty games I haven't had over the years. I haven't bought a Call of Duty game since Ghosts, mind you. Or actually, Advanced Warfare. Uh, I bought Advanced Warfare as a digital download back in the day. But I haven't bought any since, because I've heard they went downhill. And I fell out of gaming, like I said, for like the last six years or eight years or whatever. <clears throat> so I started buying them again. And uh, I picked up pretty much everything but World War II, which I could have sworn I already owned, but I don't. <laughs> so I'm trying to pick them all up. And now I'm trying to play them, and they are a pain in the ass to install on the Xbox One. I made the worst choice ever by buying these for Xbox One. Uh, if they don't have, like, an internet connection to the consoles, whether it be the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, I physically can't play the campaigns, which is some bullshit. So, I'm pretty mad about all that. But I found one game, it was a survival horror game, kind of in the vein of, like, Heavy Rain, where you're watching a movie and hitting buttons throughout. Uh, not as a quick time event, but, like, as the actual game. This is an Xbox One game called House of Ashes. It's part of a series called Dark Pictures Anthology. I think this is the only release, and then they're putting out DLC every once in a while. I think a new one just came out. I saw a channel that I watch for GTA content put out one for the newest DLC download thing. House of Ashes so far has been kind of cool. It's kind of a military thing, but kind of not. Uh, it starts off with like an ancient Egyptian, like, creature feature type of thing, and then it turns into modern day storytelling with Ashley Tisdale being deformed. I don't know why they have Ashley Tisdale uh, looking so awful in this. How she looks worse than everybody else on the screen with how beautiful she's always been. Shocked the hell out of me. I've been a fan of her since High School Musical back when I was a kid. And seeing how she looks here, wow, mocap didn't do well for her. Uh, <laughs> this game, 
I really like it. It's not like amazing or anything, but there's actually kind of this creep show feel to it. There's a guy called the curator who is telling you this story about this event with uh, this character you're playing who's actually Tisdale's uh, kind of soon-to-be ex-husband. They've had kind of a split. And uh, it's really eerie. It's not really, it's not like a, like a Silent Hill atmospheric experience, but like I'm enjoying the story that I'm playing right now. I think it's been fun so far. Uh, again, it's more like in the heavy rain vein. You're not really like running around with a gun fighting creatures in like Gears of War fashion. You're just watching something go down. You're exploring different areas and tapping on this and tapping on that to read this document and that document, talk to this person, that person. It, it's really nothing super complex. If you like movies, you'd like this. But House of Ashes, I dig it so far. I'd like to play the other DLC. I don't buy DLC, but I would almost buy it for this game because I like it so much. <clears throat> Very surprise, very big surprise, in my opinion. This game here I bought brand new. I don't know what the price was. I think it was on sale for like 20 or 30 bucks. <clears throat> Apparently it's a sequel. I don't have the first game. I never played the first game. I know nothing about that one. I know nothing about this one. But it looks bizarre. It looks like my kind of thing. It's called Remothered Broken Porcelain for Xbox One and Xbox Series X. Apparently this is a newer release, I guess in the last year or so. And uh, it looks cool. Apparently there is a first game called Remothered something. I don't know what that one's called. It might just be Remothered. But I was thinking there's a subtitle to it. I don't know if this game connects directly to that one. I don't want to risk it, so I will just buy the first one if I can find a hand. Or if I can find a, a copy online to pick up. <clears throat> get my hands on it. But I'm excited to play this. This looks like a really cool survival horror game. Uh, so I'm hoping it's good. It kind of reminds me, looking at the back of the box... It reminds me of the vagueness that I had when I saw Deadly Premonition back in the day. If you don't know about Deadly Premonition, that particular game, that is a wild card, dude. But I remember seeing that in a rental store, in a movie stars, as a matter of fact. Renting that for the weekend, my cousin hated it, and I loved it. I still love it. I think it's a great, fun, bizarre, Twin Peaks-like game. Uh, Remothered might be that kind of thing, I don't know. But to have a sequel, probably not. But to be fair, Deadly Premonition also has a sequel. So I don't know. Uh, it says the award-winning survival horror series Remothered Returns. Roam the halls of Ashman Inn and discover the truth guarded by looming threats. So I guess you're inside of a hotel or something? I don't know. It sounds kind of cool. And I like this snow globe thing here as a Christmas fanatic. But it also has a baby's face. So it's scary. I don't know. I hope it's good. I think it will be good. I have faith in it. <clears throat> anyway. Have you guys played any of these games? Have you watched any of these movies I just showed you in my haul? Let me know all that down in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say about all of this. Thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope there was some cool stuff here. Let me know what you recommend and don't recommend in this uh, video game haul. Let me know about the, the Code Veronica thing, too, if you don't mind. I'm going to go look that up right now, as a matter of fact, before I have to start getting ready for work. Uh, <clears throat> ah, wow. This cold weather is really messing with my throat, man. Plus a lot of talking. That harmed it too. Anyway, so, thank you guys for watching. God bless you all, and goodbye.